Welcome to Overcomers Christian Fellowship International Church. Turning your worry into peace. Turning your worry into what? Peace. Tell your neighbor. 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 My worry. My worry has been turned has been into, peace. into peace in the name of Jesus. This was the first summer that Jesus did the first summer while on earth. So he started from Matthew 5 to Matthew 7. Was we call it the pity. He talked about the salt and the light of the world. He talked about forgiveness. He talked about divorce. He talked about so many things. And he came to this glory because he knew that it's one of the problems that the followers of Christ will be happy. Let me tell you, all other religions, we know Christianity is not a religion, it's a way of life. All other religions, most of them, <laughs> Buddhism, Muslim, and some others, they so much believe in this son of our Lord Jesus Christ. They always quote it. That is how important the first sermon of our Lord Jesus Christ is to other religions. We have concern. There is no one in life that will say, Oh, I do not have any concern. Something that is a matter of interest to us, or very important to us, is a concern. It is, it is permissible by God for us to have concern. And we can overcome this concern by taking it straight to the Lord. But when it becomes over concern, that is what we call worry. That is what is called anxiety. When it becomes over concern. For the concern, we can look at it and say, God, you will help me. Show me the way. We go to the Lord quickly. Then when we are now thinking about that concern every day, every minute, that is over concern. Then it has become worry. Individual will be uneasy. One will be distressed. One will be agitated. And that is where the problem is. So worry keep us stuck on that problem. And it's going to distract us from getting solutions to those issues. When it is worry. What it does is like this. Worry is a two forces. Our hopes, then our fears. We are at the middle. The hope, we say, yes, you need to get this done. The fear, we say, how could it be done? And that is basically what worry is. We found ourselves in that state that we get. 
Today, many Christians are over concerned and distracted. So, our thinking in mind will be very negative. The feelings in our heart will be negative because we are one. So worrying too much will lead into chronic stress. When it becomes chronic stress, then it will resort to what they call generalized anxiety disorder. It's one of those anxiety disorders in medicine. said that worry is beneficial. No. Concern is could be beneficial because God will give us the way out. But when it comes to worry, it's very harmful. It's going to affect our health physically. That is why people will Having high blood pressure. People will be having a migraine. It can lead to stroke. It can lead to death. Psychologically or emotionally, negative thoughts will be streaming into our heart. And before we know what is happening, of course, panic attacks will come. Neurosis, mild mental health will come. Psychosis, it grows into major health problems. But that will not be our portions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Spiritually, instead of going into the word of God to encourage ourselves, what comes is fear. Fear. What can I do? What is going to happen? Well, let me tell you. Worry is important. It's the importance of worry. It cannot solve any problem. If we not solve any problem, it's just sitting in one chair and then rocking on the chair. No problem is solved. It is going to prevent us from even seeking the face of the Lord. And let me tell you, those unfavorable things we might be thinking, as a result of this worry, they might eventually end up not happening. Do you know that? It has been found out that 90% of what we are thinking negatively never happen. Ten years ago, my mother was so sick. And I said, okay, Lord, thank you. I was so worried that I had to write what I would say during a, a burial ceremony. <laughs> I've written down the plans, what will be happening. I've looked at the way I'm going to behave on that day. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, the woman I still alive up to today. <laughs> so I discarded the message. Because I was worried. It never happened. Our own mother died in 102. I think she's going to beat her own mother. So I just look at myself, well, I was worried. Why? She was not sick. I thought she was going to die. No, she didn't die. What is that worry? God 
is going to turn those words, collections of what is in your lives, to testimonies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Job 30, verse 27. This was a man that was worried. And look at what it said. Can we have it on the screen, please? The journey inside me never stops. The journey is the agitation, is the turbulence. Inside me never stop. There are sufferings confront me. That was the man of the world. But let me tell you, it has been found out in the Bible. The world do not be afraid has been written in the Bible about 365 times. So what is the meaning of that? One for every day. <laughs> every day. Do not worry. Do not. If the Bible has gotten it, do not be afraid. 365 times in the Bible. And God knows that every day we are worried. Jesus Christ knew. If it was not a problem for the Christian, for the Christians or for the church, it wouldn't have come out, or Jesus Christ wouldn't have actually come to this topic. The Bible must have probably silent about it. Peace of the living God that passes all of the standard is coming upon your heart today in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is it that people worry about the most? Some people worry about the past. Is that true? Yeah. That action I took, why? Maybe it was that action that is affecting me now. What I said last week, last year, two years ago, ten years ago, maybe, oh, that is what is the I'm having a problem with now. So some people, they worry about the past. That action I took, that decision I took, maybe that was very hard. I pray your past will not disturb your present and your future in the name of Jesus. Amen. God has forgiven you whatever has, has gone in the past. You don't need to ruminate over it anymore. Don't let it affect your present and your future. Some people have said, oh, I've killed some people before. Can Christ accept you? They cry, we accept you. Forget about that. Some people know children. They say, oh, I had some abortions done in the past. Forget about that. God has forgiven you. Give your life to Jesus Christ and see what God is going to do. So some people, they are being worried about the past. Many people are worried about the present. Many. What is going to happen? What am I going to do? What is the next line of action am I going to take? The present. Oh, you, you don't need to worry. You, don't, you just need to cry to the Lord. Lord, help me. I'm living in it. I know you are going to help me out. But most people worried about what? The future. the future. Is that not true? Yes. After all, I've eaten today. I know uh, most of us must have heard this morning. No. No. Ah, then you are fasting. <laughs> <laughs> After all, the problem is sorted out today. I know we are going to sleep tonight. We'll be thinking, hey, am I going to pay my school fees tomorrow? Am I going to pay my bills tomorrow? My rent? Please, 
I'm not saying we should not plan for the future. Don't say, Pastor Mike said that we shouldn't bother about tomorrow. Tomorrow we take care of you, of the self, like Jesus has said. You can plan about your future, but don't let it worry you. I always advise people, please, you know, for your future so that you can have rest of mind. When I started working in this country, I quickly said, Lord, what is going to happen? I joined a pension scheme. And after 16 years, I said, I told my wife, I think I still have a pension somewhere. Then I called them, they say, yes, your pension matures 60, you can do whatever you like, you can give you a box of, of money. And I wanted to change my car and give the car to the church, this car. So I said, can I have some money? They said, we can give you this amount, more than what I needed. Then I got the car, I the, the minister said, I'm giving this car, I told God, I want to give it to the Lord. You can plan! For the future, but don't be concerned, over concerned about the future. You can plan! I want to manage the life in the future, but don't be over concerned about it. Just leave everything to the Lord. I always share this when I was married. I just feel just a little bit of money. But by the time the old ceremony came, I didn't know where the money came. So if we can plan, but don't be over concerned or worried about it. That was why I told you, the students, please read your books in advance. So that when it is during the exam period, don't be rushing and get over concerned and get disturbed. No. She will continue to do well in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus can say something. The disciples were asking him, teach us how to pray. Matthew 6, 11. And he told them, give us this day. Our what? Bread. Is it the bread for tomorrow? No. In the wilderness, I told them, children of Israel, don't stay the man for today, but stay for tomorrow. Today, that is what is very, very important. We have to think about today. When it comes to worry, it affects both the rich and the poor. The rich will learn to be amassing more wealth, worldly wealth. And they'll be worried, oh, what is going to happen to my ship here? What is going to happen to my dad? They put there by fleet. And the poor will be worrying about what? What am I going to eat? The food for tomorrow, the needs. So both of them are in the same shoe. And they will forget about the world. who is called God. Because they have to pursue those things. They might be that. That was why the Lord Jesus Christ said, Look, you don't need to worry. If you worry, then you cannot serve me. You worry, you can't get anything. So our text we have read. Matthew 6, 35, 34. Jesus gave two examples. And he mentioned about worry about the basic necessities of life. So verse 25. Says something. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Not yet for your body. Not yet for your body. What you shall put on is not the love more than meat and the body than raiment. We have basic needs. And Jesus mentioned the basic needs food and water. What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? And I know the psychology students say we bear me weakness. A man called Maslow. Maslow's hierarchy of 
we must have borrowed that from the Lord Jesus Christ. Is <laughs> that the first thing you need to get? Is somebody can ask. Water, food, shelter, rest. If you don't get that one and you are moving up, he put about five pyramids. You can't go to safety. You can't go to love and belongingness. You can't go to esteem. You can't go to self-actualization. He just can't the them. So the basic things, Jesus Christ alone. Water, food. What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? And it is true. Is that not true? As soon as we can eat, we can move around. If you can't eat, you won't have the energy to move around. So what is the cure for this worry about food? Jesus told them, Behold the fowls of the year, verse 26. The fowls, that is the boss. What is the issue with them? They do not plant. They don't have any garden. Do they have any garden? No. Do they do any harvest? No. Do they store anything in their barn? No. But Jesus Christ said, your heavenly Father, feed us there. Say, what of about you? Made in the image of God himself, children of God, why are you worried about what you are going to eat, what you are going to drink? I didn't know that some people they study birds. Do you know that? Yes. They are not called a zoologist. They still have another branch from zoology that study birds. Ornithology. Go and check it. They study the movement of birds. What the birds say, they are songs. I didn't know. But I could remember in the early 80s, when I was another graduate, that the professor gave an inaugural lecture about the life of birds. He has been studying the life of birds for almost 10 years. When he came out, with the way the birds move around, the way they travel, they migrate, the way they talk, I said, this is serious. <laughs> so one man was given a story that one bird spoke to another one. And he said, I would like to know the actual reason why these anxious human beings are very restless and they are, they, are, they are worried. The other board replied it. And he said, maybe they don't have a father that look and cares for me and you. Maybe they don't have a father like that. But those are not the children of God. They are the creation of God. So they have one creation relationship with God, but we have the father, son, father, daughter relationship with our God. So why are we afraid? What we are going to eat? And it comes, well, what we are going to eat has to do with money. What we are going to do, we do with what? With money. I pray the Lord we meet you at your point of needs in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> So when I was looking at this, then that image came to me in 1 Kings 17, 4 to 6. Elijah was sitting there. God told him, I'm going to send birds to be giving you food in the morning and in the evening. I think you know that. Yes. The rabbits, they were carrying bread and meat. <laughs> because God can make you something. We feel the birds, but now God sent the birds to be feeding Elijah. <laughs> so we can see the wake of it. You shall have enough and you will be blessing to others in Jesus' name. Amen. So when we are nervously asking God, 
am I going to eat? Am I going to pay my rent? Am I going to pay my mortgage? We don't have, or we have little feet. It was what Jesus was saying. Your friends is little because of believers. The acts of this. So what are you worried? So he gave us the second example. He said, first twenty-five about the clothes we wear. If the weather is not too cold, can you wear more than one shirt? No, let's ask. Can we wear more than one shirt? Yeah. If you wear several shirts when the weather is hot, and if anyone sees you with such a cumbersome load of clothes, oh, they will quickly call the police. A mental, something with mental problem. Even if, if you don't behave like that. Ah, we know that, of course. Some people now, in fact, in this environment, they don't wear clothes anymore. Mm -hmm. And even during winter, I don't winter, when it is cold, you will see them put gloves on their arms and their legs open and their hands open. <laughs> there are why people are worried about the clothes they are going to wear. We have so many, we are fascists nowadays, right? We don't wear completed process, the one that is torn. That is what we are wearing. Is that not true? Yeah. Ah, that's part of the fashion. <laughs> and then we are worried. What I'm going to wear. And the cure for that is this. Because our treasures is not in our work to process. No. And Jesus Christ gave them the cure. Consider the list of the field. <laughs> When you see lilies of the field, flowers, very beautiful, very gorgeous, red, blue, white, when you see them, you will be wondering, Lord, I went to Eden Project, I've been there several times, I think we've been there, yeah. you see the flowers there, you say, Lord, this is marvelous. So Jesus Christ said, if God, your Father in heaven, looking at this least invaluable things, flowers, that today they will grow, they will be very beautiful, tomorrow they will be turned into the fire, and they are gone. He said, don't you think that is going to clothe you? And Jesus Christ made mention of Solomon. That Solomon in all his glory and splendor and his wealth, God has not even put such beautiful clothes upon him like the lilies of the field. He said, then what are you afraid? If you don't know Solomon, Solomon was the richest king in his time. <laughs> Up to now, we cannot compare with any other rich person on earth. He reigned for 40 years, and every year he got 21 stones of coal. And by the time you look at the whole thing for 40 years, this man was in a money of about 1.8 trillion pounds. Where you come from, this? So, what kind of cloth do you think that this man cannot wear? But Jesus was saying, with all that, look at the lilies of the food. The more than Solomon, then why are you afraid of what you are going to wear or what you are going to eat? So I don't know that worry in your heart that is not making you, is making you to have sleepless nights. Peace of the Lord will come into your life today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And he spoke in that verse 25. The life is more than food. The body is more than clothes. The most, the most important thing is our right relationship with our God. Satan tempted Jesus Christ in Matthew 4 4. Turn the stones to bread so that you can eat. You are very hungry. And Jesus told him, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that proceeded from the man. So when we are thinking of food, 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 and we don't think about the word of God, it doesn't fall. 
And he said, verse 27, which of you who are worried about being shot, can you add any inch to your, to your eyes? Except you wear high heel shoes. <laughs> that is when you can say, oh, I'm not taller today. Now, without high heel shoes, you are still the same. You can't add any inch. You can't add any one day to your little back. Can you? No. Uh, some people, children will tell you, now I'm older than you, you are older than me. What is your birthday? This, oh, we are the same month. But what of the days, what of the seconds? Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, I reject worry as from today in Jesus' name. Amen. No, say it confidently. I reject worry as from today in Jesus' name. When you reject it before the Lord, it's being rejected by heaven. Who the last morning? I've been rejected by the heavens today in the name of Jesus. Quickly, what are those steps you can take? Verse 33 just give us this step. For seek ye first the kingdom of God, and what? His righteousness. And all these things shall be. So the first step is to focus more on God than our circumstances. We have to say, God, I want your kingdom to come into my life and to come to the world. He is to be tired of our lives to say, Lord, I want to move closer to you. I want to move you. The level that I am is not what I should. I want you to be speaking to me. And me speaking to you. Hear me from you. Very, very important. Why? Because we devote our time, our energy, our interest to something that is not relevant. Instead of devoting it to the source of the blessings, we are just chasing the blessings around and not the source. So that is why we say, seek it first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. No, I want to be righteous. I want to be Christian. That is all what the scriptures say. Focus more on God than our circumstances. When we focus more on God than our circumstances, then prophecy is I told you the night I was not allowed to go for the uh, 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 31st of December to January. And my boss said, you, you have to do night shift. We can't cancel it. I prayed, Lord, no more night shift because I was to be in the presence of the Lord. And God answered the prayer quickly. Something happened in the hospital quickly. Because of deputy manager also. And I applied and I was given. Tell me, am I going to be putting myself on that duty? I was to be the doctor. Eh? Am I going to be doing that? Mm -hmm. I can't do that. That was the end of my duty now. Because I was thinking about the things of God. You no, know, I have something to do in the hospital. I can't be doing that. Just like our I think our brother or someone said that. On Sunday, yes, Reverend John. Leave the work on Sunday. Come to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. So that is what we are saying. He is to be perfect, therefore, as our Heavenly Father is what? Is perfect. Mm -hmm. That is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, let's sing this song. Spirit of the living God. Pull our flesh on. Spirit of the living God, pour a fresh upon me. We always seem to say, mend me, mold me, feed me, make use of me. That is all what we are saying. When we are seeking the kingdom of God first, and so Jesus, that is what we are saying. The second one is in verse 34. Live in the present. Take one day at a time. Jesus said, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil that we need. Please don't worry about me. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow has got its own problems. Mm -hmm. Why not face what you got today? Tell the Lord, help me for today. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. When it is tomorrow, then you call upon the Lord as well. Have a trust in Him. That you are going to help Him. And He's going to help you in Jesus' name. Amen. So please live in the present. Don't bring the trouble of tomorrow. Don't import 
not the trouble, the problems of tomorrow in June today. It's not, it's not, it's not fear for today. It's not fear. Today we'll be asking you, why are you importing tomorrow's problem into me? It will be asking, it will be asking you. You haven't dealt with the ones that are put in before you. You are not importing that of tomorrow, that of next week, that of next year, that of when you are married, that of when you are, when you are graduated, that you are looking for a job. So it has to do with our faith, please. And the Lord will give you that faith to trust in the Lord for your tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cultivate godly contentment. Please continue to be looking. They can't take the blessings. God has given to you. If you are not contented with what God has done for you today, it's going to be difficult for tomorrow. So contentment is very, very easy. We have to do it. Brother Paul in Philippians 4, 12 to 13. I know both how to be abased and how to be abound everywhere. He said, in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. He knew that very well. Both to abound and to serve our need. Then verse 13 said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Can you tell your neighbor, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens You have done this, you are going to do the next one. And by me, cultivate healthier lifestyle habits. This is what we do. Eh? Eat, please, stop eating eh? KFC. Yes. And Hakuna. Prepare nutritious food. Those ones that our parents taught us. Our parents didn't teach us McDonald's and Ketchup. Thank God we have our grannies here. They taught us how to eat good food. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you have six hours to rest, minimum. Our students, do rest more than six hours. Six hours is what you can just do. Eat well and go to gym. I like my brother. He always attend gym. Uh, just to relax your mind. And the good news came to him there. Good news will locate you in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Go to gym. Say no to what you cannot do. Whatever is against your schedules that you can't handle, say what? No. no. You can't satisfy everyone. Can you satisfy everyone? No. Is the Bible saying you should satisfy everyone? No. 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 Say no. I can't do it. Please. <coughs> and let your future plan be smart. Hey, smart objective. Uh, you understand that? Yeah. I will not explain that. But you understand. Yeah. Smart objective. Smart. Hey. Not that tomorrow I want to get. Mercedes best. I can still study. <laughs> God can do that. But well, that is not smart anyway. As the Holy Spirit leads you, help others. Think of what is going to be cool, right, not the wrong. No perfection. You see, everything is going to be And you can't predict the future. The future will be great in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to Overcomers Christian Fellowship International Church, a place of worship, words, evangelism, discipleship, prophetic prayers, and many more. Join our weekly services. On Sunday, we have our worship service. 10 30 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Mondays, Bible studies 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. To join our house fellowship on Fridays at 15 Piston Way, St. Buddha's, between the hours of 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Join our student fellowship at the Hour Moment with the Plymouth University student at Babbage OHO2 Lecture Room. Plymouth University from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. 
second Friday of every month, Operation Push, pray until something happens, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Worship with us today, every first Sunday of every month, Holy Communion service, second Sunday of every month, prophetic words and declaration, third Sunday of every month, prayers and deliverance service, fourth Sunday of every month, Victorious Praise Service, Fifth Sunday of every month, Youth Service. Do you desire to choose in your academics, career, business, relationship? Join our quarterly breakthrough prayers every last Friday of every three months, 7 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. Visit us today at Ubacoma Sanctuaries, 15 Garden Terrace of Plymouth Mott McLean. He held for CCEP, Plymouth, United Kingdom. For more information and details on our programs and past worship services, visit our website at www.tocfi.com. You can also call these numbers for more information. 07862-710-378 or 07780-994-236. General Hovasia, OCFI Church, Pastor Mike, and Pastor Mrs. Kustana, Ilila Dewa says, This is your year of dominion restoration. You have more than conquerors.